In this episode, I want to show you how you can cut your drone footage to a beat, making it a lot more interesting for your viewers. At the same time, I want to show you how you get access to free music. Welcome to this series of drone footage editing tutorials that will take you through the process of crafting videos from the initial steps to the final product. Consider subscribing and hit the bell to get notified so you don't miss out on the next episode in this series. Because drones are not recording audio, the drone footage by itself is often very uh, boring. But you can change that by adding some music. And if you on top of this can match the music uh, to the transitions of your video, you will uh, improve the end result dramatically compared to your raw footage. I will teach you how to match your transitions uh, to the beat of the music. And this is not very difficult because there's basically no right and no wrong. And by time you will probably evolve and develop your own style. If you watch this video to the end, I've included a bonus tip that shows you how to match the length of your audio track to the clips that you have selected for your video project and not the other way around. It shouldn't be uh, the length of the audio track that determines the length of your video. It should be the clips that you decide to include. So I think you will find this pretty handy. Before we start, as always, you can download the sample footage that I'm using in the video from the description below, as well as gain access to a free 30-day trial of Final Cut Pro, and that will make it easy for you to follow along. If you're new to Final Cut, I made a 20-minute crash course that will teach you the basic skills to navigate the software. Go and watch that video, I'll be waiting here until you're back. You can access uh, this video through the link in the description below. As always, I will highly encourage you to ask questions in the comments below and I will try and answer as many as I can and even include some of them in uh, upcoming episodes. In Final Cut, I've created a project that is called Orby Castle Promo Clips. And in this, I have arranged a series of clips from a, a recording I have been doing from a castle that is located close to where my parents live. And uh, you can see these clips, they look pretty nice. But without the music, they are a little bit boring. Let's switch over and see what options we have to find some music we can use for this video to bring it alive. The first option that I want to show you is uh, the YouTube Music Library. And uh, the beautiful thing about that is that it's free. It has a lot of uh, music in here that you can select. And uh, it's free to use in, uh, in your videos as you like. And you can sort uh, by these uh, fillers in the top that will allow you to uh, narrow it down and find some music that will actually match the mood of uh, the video that you're trying to make. The only downside here is that uh, when you play these tracks, you can't really see the waveform of, uh, of the track. And that's very important for selecting the music. You want music that uh, changes or is not very monotone because these changes in tempo or in uh, rhythm uh, will allow you to sync up the transitions in the music. I'm not a musician, so I don't know what these are called, but uh, it will be pretty clear to you uh, once you hear it that um, how it works. I'm actually using a paid service called uh, Epidemic Sound and um, I'm paying around $15 a month for this uh, but I'm also cranking out a, out a lot of videos uh, for the channel so I need this kind of service. Uh, the selection is a lot bigger in Epidemic Sound. One of the difficult things uh, when you need to select the music for your videos is actually to find music that matches the mood of the video that you're going to produce. This is unfortunately not something that I can help you with. You need to somehow ask yourself what kind of expression do you want uh, the video to have. So for me, I'm doing a, like a short montage here of a castle. So I want something bombastic, something epic to go along with this video. And I found out that, that this uh, number Skyburst 4 from uh, Reina Silat that matches perfectly the expression that I want in uh, this video. And uh, if you look at the bottom uh, of uh, Epidemic Sound, you can uh, see the waveform of uh, the audio track. And especially the part, uh, the front part of this track is interesting because there's some rapid shifts in uh, tempo or some, uh, some uh, changes in the beat that will allow me to nicely sync up the transitions uh, in uh, the video. So I think we will go for that track and uh, download it. So let's try and download it now. So let's jump back into the editing software and see what we can do with this. So what I will do next is I will take the, the track and I will pull it into the timeline like this. 
And for this experiment, I don't want to make a very long video. So uh, let's chop off the remaining uh, or the back end of, uh, of this part. And I do that by just shortening the clip like this. So now I will end up with a clip that's not too long. So now I have my raw audio file that I, I want to use for my clip. So now I want to find the, the positions where I want to have my transitions. And the way that I do that is uh, to play the audio and then listen to uh, sections of uh, repetitions in the audio where it would make a good fit for a transition. And then I would use the shortcut key M to uh, put in some markers in uh, the sections uh, where I want my transitions. I have the headset on. And then just play the track. When I get to a spot where I want the transition, I just press M. And then a final one here, like that. So now I put in my markers, and they might not be 100% perfect, but they will uh, they will uh, basically uh, help you uh, guide your transitions into the right area. You might need to fine adjust it uh, later on uh, once you have positioned the clips. The next step is that uh, I'm going to take this uh, audio track, and then I will uh, take it and put it below the clips that I've selected uh, for the video. And uh, what I want to do here is I want to have a nice opening here. That's a nice opening sequence. So I will start by matching this up to the first marker. Right now it matches pretty well. So um, I'll just leave it like that. The next one is a panning motion past the castle. So I will shorten that clip so it fits to for the next transition. And I will repeat that process until all the clips are positioned on the top of the markers. Like that. Like that. So right now, you have to listen through this a couple of times uh, to make sure that the transitions are positioned in the right place. And you can just adjust them here. Because it's the magnetic timeline, it's very easy to adjust it so it's spot on. So let's see. Let's just play the first part of it so you can see what it looks like. So every time something drastic happens in the music, we switches to another clip that will lift sort of the motion around uh, this clip or movie or video that we are doing here. As you can see now, the audio track is longer than uh, the amount of clips that I have. And I could of course uh, decide that I, I could just add another clip or I could maybe make some of the clips longer. But I don't want to do that. I don't want uh, the audio track to dictate uh, the length of my clip. I've decided this is the length of my video. So what I want to do is uh, do the opposite and shorten the audio track. And the way that you can do that is uh, that you need to look for repetitions in the audio track. And once you have identified those, you can basically cut that section out of it. So let's see if we can do that. I will try to start by making this a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. So here there's a section that repeats itself. This one basically also repeats itself. So what I can do, one thing that I can see here is that uh, this section does not match up very well. So if this marker is in the wrong position, I can basically just delete it, put the, the playhead here and press M and then put it in the right position. Not that it, it matters now, but you can see that will allow me to adjust it to do the fine adjustment. But right now I want to take out this section. So I take the blade tool and then I will cut the audio track here and I will do the same here. Uh, and here we need to be a little bit careful that we do this the right way. So I want to do it again like this. I need to take this one away because it snaps like that. So I want to cut it here. So right now I can basically take out this section of the track and then shorten down the audio track. So let's try and do that. So if I move this one over here like this, that should be it. 
So hopefully now when I play it back, you could use a crossfade that will uh, allow you to go uh, seamlessly from one uh, side to the other. But in this simple way, you should be able to take out part of the music without uh, too much effort. So let's listen and see how that is. So this is a simple way to uh, shorten down your audio track. There'll probably be some audio guys out there that will kill me for, for using that technique, but that will work perfectly fine for, for your YouTube videos. So let's play the final video clip. I just want to add a little thing here. I can uh, basically let, let the audio fade in in the beginning and let it fade out in the end by adjusting these sliders. So now you have a video where the audio is synced up. And I hope you agree that the, the difference is quite significant uh, compared to raw footage without any audio. I do want to add in a disclaimer. I'm not a professional audio guy. So this is just a rough technique that will allow you to do this exercise. And uh, you probably need to go back and forward in the video a few times to make sure that uh, your transitions are in the right spot. But at least this video will show you the technique and get you started. You probably have seen uh, some of these clips before because I used them in the full length video where I synced up all uh, the clips that I have from this castle recording uh, until uh, this uh, song that we just selected. If you want to see that video, I've included a link for it in the description below. It's a really beautiful place, this Orby Castle. It's actually uh, very, very old. It's from 1530, I think. So I even think if you are American, it's even before Columbus uh, hit the shores of America. So this is a very, very old building and, uh, and I feel uh, very privileged to have the chance to go down and film it. Normally this area is closed uh, for the public, but my father uh, lives uh, very close to it, also my mother. But uh, he's good friends with the guy that takes care of this castle and uh, he allowed us to go down there and make some uh, recordings. So that's, uh, that's pretty special and uh, this is not something that you would see uh, anywhere. I've always uh, been a big admirer of, uh, of this castle and wanted to see it inside. Uh, I didn't have a chance to do that yet, but I hope I will someday get a chance to see how it looks inside. I think it's, uh, it's located perfectly and the sun is positioned perfectly when it uh, sets in the evening. The full length video that is in 4K, so you really can see all the details uh, from this beautiful castle. All right, that's it. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, then uh, give it a like. If you didn't like it, then feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.